Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking through what giant ionic structures are. Now, when I say ionic, essentially, I'm referring to a structure containing ions of both metals and non-metals. So I have done a video about ionic bonding and specifically this electrostatic attraction that forms between these metal cations and non-metal anions. And now I'm going to talk about the structures that these ionic compounds formed. Now in that particular video I used sodium chloride as an example. I'm going to do the same here in this video. So if we imagine this big uh, structure in the middle of the uh, video that I've got here with this gre the green and purple dots. Each one of these green dots represents a sodium, an Na plus ion. Now a sodium atom loses its outermost electron to become a sodium ion and the purple dots represent Cl minus or chloride ions. Now chlorine atoms gain electrons to gain full outer shell and they form Cl minus or chloride ions, anions. And because you you can work out that the sodium has a positive charge, the chloride has a negative charge. There's this attraction between them, and they form this ionic compound. Now, because you get the, this uh, electrostatic force of attraction, you get this structure built up, this lattice. So each one of these green circles essentially has a positive charge associated with it. And we can draw those in here. And equally... Each one of the purple dots, represented by a chloride ion, has a negative charge, so we could draw those in too. And this here is representing sodium chloride. This is the example that we're going to use in this particular video. Now, in ionic compounds, millions of ions are packed together in this regular 3D arrangement. So that is key. And we'll just make a few notes here that it's a regular 3D arrangement. So we're just going to make a few little notes about key, key descriptors of this particular ionic structure. So we've got a regular 3D arrangement, and it's known as an ionic lattice. So... That also is worth mentioning, so it's called an ionic lattice. And that's the word to use in an exam. Now, the ionic bonds here act in all directions. So we can represent that with these arrows here. And on diagrams in books and on the internet, you might find those particular arrows on it. So we'll just make a note of that there. These bonds, the ionic bonds, act in all directions. Now all ionic compounds form crystals when solid with flat sides and straight edges. Now, ionic bonds are very strong, and they actually require a lot of heat to break them. This means that ionic compounds are solid at room temperature and have very high melting and boiling points. So that, again, is one fact definitely worth noting. That they are solid, tend to be solid, at room temperature. So we'll put room temp. And there's another point, so there we'll put arrows upwards to represent high melting and boiling points. So a few fundamental facts to do with ionic structures. They've got a regular 3D arrangement called an ionic lattice, the bonds act in all directions, solid at room temperature and a very high melting and boiling points. Now if we think of an, uh, particular questions you might get uh, they could include ones like this, for example. Sodium chloride is made of ions with a 1 plus and a 1 minus charge, yet magnesium oxide has ions with a 2 plus and 2 minus charge. Now the question, and this is a previous one I've seen in an exam, says which compound would have a higher melting point and why? 
Now, because sodium has a one plus charge and the chloride is one minus, if you compare that with a two plus and a two minus, clearly the two plus and two minus charge is much greater. So that force of attraction, that electrostatic force of attraction is much greater. So compared with sodium chloride, magnesium oxide would have much stronger forces of attraction. So it would require much greater temperatures to break those bonds. So in answer to the question, which compound would have the higher melting point and why, it would be magnesium oxide, because it has a greater force of attraction between the positive and negative cations and anions. Just to quickly uh, make a note of those, actually, because uh, a lot of students tend to ask the difference between the two. The positive ions are called the cations, and the negative ones are called the anions. We'll just make a note on the side there. Now, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity. And they don't conduct electricity because at room temperature they are solid. But when they are liquid, when they're molten, they can do. Now, a question they could ask is, why might this be? Now, if you imagine that when we break this uh, lattice up, for example, when it's liquid, the bonds between the ions become a little bit weaker and the particles are a little bit freer to move. And if they're freer to move, then essentially we have, if we just draw essentially a little diagram in the top corner, we'll answer this question in the top corner here. This goes back essentially to our, ba our very basic solid liquid gas particle model. If we just were to draw solid there you can see we've got particles in a very fixed arrangement but when we look at particles in a liquid those particles are a little bit spread out and this is how those ions are when liquid or molten so the ions that are essentially negatively charged are able to conduct the electrical flow Electricity is essentially the, the, the flow of negative charge, the flow of electrons. And we can get electricity flowing because those negatively charged ions are free to move. Now, ionic compounds, I should say, are usually soluble in water because water molecules have a slight electrical charge and can attract the ions away from the lattice. Now, when dissolved, the ions are free to move and can carry an electrical current, as I've kind of referred to in the uh, question I've just mentioned. But one other thing to note, and it's the final part of this video, is that ionic compounds are brittle. They shatter when you hit them. Now, a layer of ions get shifted so that ones with the same charges get lined up together. Now, a question that a student asked me is, why in that case would that result in the lattice splitting up? Now, that particular question I'm going to answer down here at the bottom of the video. So if we consider that this lattice has an arrangement, of, a three arrangement of positive and negative ions together, if we all of a sudden were to hit that lattice, because it is brittle, brittle and they shatter, then what we'd get is essentially layers forming a little bit like this. If we were to put charges on those Ions. So if we say these circles represent ions, and we said that a layer of ions get shifted so that ones with the same charge line up together. What you'd essentially end up with is a scenario whereby these particular ions here, and if we just take these as an example, these particular ions here, because they are like charges, they will push away from one another. Positive charges repel other positive charges. Negative charges would repel other negative charges. So you're essentially pushing these ions apart. And that is the answer to that question. So when the student said, why would this result in the lattice splitting up? It's because when like charges are close together, there is a repulsion. So rather than being an electrostatic force of attraction, we get a force of repulsion. And they repel, they push away from one another, and that causes the lattice to split and that's the answer to that one. So there we have just a little uh, few bits and bobs about giant ionic structures. They're formed from ionic compounds, those essentially that 
are made of positive metal and negative non-metal ions that have an electrostatic force of attraction with one another. We've got this regular 3D arrangement and we call this giant structure an ionic lattice. The bonds are in all directions and because we've got these strong bonds there's a high melting and high boiling point associated with them so a great uh, temperature is needed to, be able to overcome the forces of attraction and break those bonds. Now when this ionic structure is liquid or molten the particles of, or the ions particularly are free to move and so can conduct electricity but when they do and when dissolved um, in water they're also free but it, it compromises the structure of the lattice and if the lattice were to be uh, hit in any way because it's typically solid at room temperature if it were to be hit then we can break this lattice up because the like charges would repel one another. Now all of those points are points that could come up in particular um, exam questions. They're all mentioned in the uh, various specifications at Key Stage 4 Chemistry. So hopefully all of that helps a little bit. Um, in other videos I'll be talking about gyanic ion structures and how they differ to the massive covalent molecules that we get that have covalent bonding in them. Okay, hope all that helps.